are these people? Uh, the U.S., uh, as the title says, gave the green light to give Ukraine bombs uh, in order for them to bomb Russia. So this kind of went under the radar last week uh, in light of Trump's conviction. Mm -hmm. um, so, and actually, funny enough, as I was saying that, because we always say, you know, if there is big news that people are kind of clamoring around, what's really going on? So I think I said that to you privately. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't think we definitely weren't the only ones who had the same idea. Uh, so shout out to Nick uh, from RBN slash Hotspot, uh, who also basically kind of called this out. Uh, so he did uh, a short on Hotspot that gives a little bit of information regarding what the sitch is regarding this funding. So go ahead, Nick. Joe Biden has finally done it. While America was distracted with the Trump show trial, we had Biden that gave Ukraine the A-OK -okay to use U.S. weapons on the Russian mainland. This is a move that the United States has resisted thus far because providing weapons that will be used to strike Russia is such an obvious major escalation. And don't buy these bullshit headlines that are trying to paint the picture that somehow Biden was pressured to do this. This has been the strategy that NATO has been doing since the beginning of this conflict. The United States will draw a red line. A bunch of US proxy goons in Europe will push the United States, push the United States to change their red line, and then Biden would fold under pressure. We've seen this so many times. Quick question for all the NATO psychopaths. How does allowing Ukraine to strike into Russian territory change the trajectory of this war? It does not. The same way that sending the M1 Abram tanks and fighter jets to Ukraine didn't change the war. Once you realize that NATO and the West, their only goal is to boost military industrial complex profits and not win, everything starts to make more sense. The West has been very open about the fact that they are using Ukraine to test their weapons. Now they're trying to see how well their long range weapons does against Russia. Joe Biden in the West are willing to risk World War III for a boom in the military industrial complex. So Nick, who do you think is winning the war between Russia and Ukraine? Raytheon! Channel Hotspot. <clears throat> Channel Hotspot and RVN and Nick. And shout out to our friend, uh, Chris Legion, who also had a similar uh, thought, uh, but he tweeted, at this point, Russia has the right to declare war on the United States. This is a full indictment to spark war with Russia. Putin has hinted that U.S. or NATO weapons used to attack Russia will result in their retaliatory strike on those particular nations. Mm -hmm. so, he, um, so he linked to this article, uh, which we are going to read, uh, to shout out to friend of the show, Brett Wilkins. Also, any uh, media awards honoree. Um, speakers, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so he writes, Biden reportedly gives Ukraine, oh, not reportedly, he did, um, okay to strike Russia with U.S. weapons. One high ranking Vatican official warned that the new policy could lead to an escalation that no one will be able to control. So, is the Vatican weighing in? Um, um, I'm sure we'll figure that out. I mean, but <laughs> sure, sure. Um, U.S. President Joe Biden has partially lifted his administration's ban on Ukrainian use of U.S. supplied weapons to strike targets inside Russia, according to Thursday reporting. A policy critics have called a provocative escal escalation of the 27th month war. Citing people familiar with the move, Politico reported that Biden has quietly given Kyiv the green light to carry out limited cross-border strikes near Karfi, I guess is how you say it, Karfiev, Karfi. Karfi. as Russian forces menace Ukraine's second largest city. 
Yeah. The president recently directed his team to his team to ensure that Ukraine is able to use U.S. weapons for counter fire purposes in Kharkiv, so Ukraine can hit back at Russian forces hitting them or preparing to hit them. One American official told the outlet. The official said that Biden's pro prohi pro prohi prohibition on long wage attacks inside Russia has not changed. They gave a similar statement to The Hill. The number one priority for U.S.-Ukraine policy should be avoided escalation to direct U.S. conflict with a nuclear-armed Russia. Russian President Vladimir Putin, who ordered the invasion of his neighbor in February 2022, warned Tuesday that any attacks by Ukrainian forces on Russia using Western supply weapons can lead to serious consequences. Biden's reversal came amid divided opinion in his administration over whether to allow Ukraine to use U.S. arms to attack Russia. Se Secretary of State Anthony Blinken favored the more aggressive policy, which is supported by major NATO allies, including Germany, France, the United Kingdom, and Canada. Anti-war voices sounded the alarm over Biden's shift, with Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Paolin saying, I think this possibly should concern everyone who cares about the fate of our world. Yeah, It could lead to an escalation that no one will be able to control, he added. Defense priorities of Washington, D.C.-based foreign policy think tank said on social media that the number one priority for U.S.-Ukraine policy should be avoiding escalation to direct U.S. conflict with a nuclear-armed Russia. When the U.S. should be exercising its diplomatic power, it is instead entrenching itself deeper into a war Kiev is unlikely to win, the Coach Brothers funded organization added. Um, so any thoughts, Reeve? Um, I mean, I've seen a, a ton of stuff recently about this, mainly because, you know, France is also having this problem, right? You know, there's, there's a few things that are essentially like, you know, uh, Russia stating that if, if France sends, you know, fighter jets there and they attack Russia, that they'll attack France, right? That kind of stuff. Um... I've also seen something along the lines of Ukrainians saying that uh, a lot of the training that's being sent over there is by U.S. military with no, like, war experience, right? So it's like the training is dog shit from what, from what they're saying, like, which I find somewhat humorous. But I think I, I sent you this tweet last night, right? Um, you did, yes. So, so Douglas McGregor, um, Ukraine strikes Russia with Western weapons. Here we go. Just shortly following the Biden administration's authorization for Ukraine to employ American weaponry against Russia, Kyiv swiftly acted on the new found liberty to target a military installation across the border, utilizing U.S. manufactured artillery system as indicated by a member of Ukraine's parliament. Yohor Chernev, the deputy chairman of the Ukrainian Parliament's Committee on National Security, Defense, and Intelligence, closed on Tuesday that Ukrainian forces had successfully neutralized Russian missile launchers with a strike in the Belgrad region, approximately 20 miles into Russian territory. The operation employed a high mobility artillery rocket system, HIMARS, he affirmed. This marks the inaugural instance of a Ukrainian official openly acknowledging the use of American weaponry engaged targets with Russia subsequent to President Biden's rescindment of the prohibition on such action. So, yeah. Um, so, basically, they got their toys and decided to use them right away. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing, though. Ukraine is losing badly. Mm -hmm. And... And... Maybe you can understand this because I, I honestly, like, since we haven't talked about Ukraine in a minute, and honestly, like, I'm not as familiar with Ukraine as you are. Yeah. I, so right now they're losing. And right now, given what's happening in Gaza, I don't get, I'm not getting the, I, the, the thought of Biden, like, releasing essentially giving them the green light to bomb Russia now, especially yeah. given this is election season. Like, you're already doing shit in terms mm -hmm. of what's happening in Palestine. Now you're trying to escalate 
a war with Russia. Like, maybe you maybe you can understand this better than me. Like, what do you think is the thinking I think, behind? I think there's politics? two two like thought processes here, right? A the old way of thinking about this, like Bush and Daddy Bush and all that stuff, where it's like if you won an election, start a war, right? And the American mm-hmm. public will let you finish the war, right? That's the classic move. Having said right. that, which I can I think, argue, right? Which, go ahead. Well, well, the other the other thing is similar to what Obama did before Trump got in office, right? Which is put a ton of NATO forces alongside Russia, and then let Trump do either he's got to pull out, right? Which then they'll yell at him for. Or he's got to ramp up stuff, which they'll yell at him for. So either way, it screws over the next administration. Essentially, right. they're forced to either capitulate him... or. So, so it's almost kind of saying subtly mm-hmm. that they want to lose. That's what it's kind of saying to me. Yeah, like, I, mean, I, think... I think it's kind of their way of saying you know, throwing in a towel and basically being like, yeah, we're done. So let's just do whatever we can and let Trump deal with it. And Trump, well, for Trump, it's going to be a lose-lose situation for him, given that he's known to be somewhat friendly with Putin. And if he pulls out, then people are going to go attack him for it. Or if he escalates, then, as you said, I think that definitely makes sense. He's going to, well, I can argue that the media will kind of turn on him, even though um, the media has been pro-Ukraine all this time. But they'll yeah. flip it on a switch, given that it will be Trump. I mean, I so, think they're they're under the assumption that Trump will back off that war, right? So, right. you know, it depends on who he pulls into his cabinet. But, I mean, if it was similar to the ones last time, I don't think they have a problem with it. So... We'll see, but I, I think that's part of this. It's also uh, look, NATO's trying to fight a war on mul- multiple fronts right now. They're fighting it in Israel. They're fighting it in Ukraine, Africa, like Africa. The empire is thin on all fronts. So I think you're seeing the rules of engagement change. Hopefully. They feel like we'll buy them more time, at least. you know, like that's that's part of it. Where it's like if they can strike within Russia, that either mean that also puts Russia on the back foot, right? Either Russia has to escalate that, which then they blame Russia, right? Because it'll be right. another victim, you, you know, it'll be unprovoked, whatever, right? Even though we know that. U.S., France, multiple other countries have survived weapons that are now attacking Russia directly. That's pretty much what that's going to be. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's there was a title of an article I thought about bringing the other day where it's like an, it's another endless war that we now have to fund and keep up with, which really no change in that front is going to happen. You know, Russia could drop a thousand tanks on them next week and be done with. It. So, right. You know, like Russia's been kind of holding their cards. So we'll see. But yeah, well, you brought this, I think, right? Yeah. So, uh, so we're gonna end the segment with how we started. So we started with Nick. We're gonna end with Rome. Um, uh, so Rome, I think, you know, kind of called this out, um, fairly well. Um, yeah. so, so let's see what he says. So go ahead. We got him, y'all. We got him. Donald Trump is a convicted felon. But is he going to prison? The man can still become your president. So what did you actually get out of this? See, while you guys were paying attention to the stage and the puppets that was talking while they put on a show of political theater, the Biden yeah, administration yeah. just gave Ukraine the okay to use U.S. missiles on Russia. So we got them. We got them, y'all. But what did you actually get? 
nothing. The man can still become your president and you are a step closer to war war three. I wish you guys actually paid attention to what's going on and not what they are showing you. What they're showing you is what they want you to see. Yeah. Right. And again, mm -hmm. just, yeah, I mean, it was Trump got all the press last week, but no one was talking about this. I think even in independent, I think pe more people are now talking about it now. I think due dissonance. I think did a segment on this today, mm. but this was, but I caught wind of this since last week. And to Rome's credit, I think he called this out last week. So, you know, but the idea that this story, which I think is the bigger story and probably the bigger deal, because Trump is going to still going to run for president that like he's being convicted, like it's not going to hurt him. If yeah. anything, it's just going to help his chances of winning the election. Meanwhile, Biden secretly, you know, is funding Ukraine against what he should be doing in order to escalate a war with Russia, which, again, Ukraine is not going to win that war. But it's another opportunity for the MIC to boost their funding, uh, being able to sell more of their toys to Ukraine, and then escalate with a war with Russia that we really do not need right now on top of everything else that is happening in the world. It's almost like we're trying to be the piece of shit country in the world that everybody just wants to hate at this mm -hmm. point. It's, you know, and meanwhile, like, all of this money is going out the door, and what have we gotten really collectively as people in this country? You know, like, now prices are going down, and that was actually a story that I was thinking of doing, uh, we put that, that was on the chopping block. But the idea that a lot of these corporations now just decide all of a sudden, oh, we want to, we actually going to cut, um, cut the costs on items in our stores, either temporarily or permanently, you know, because people are struggling, you know? So you've been pr price gouged this whole time since the pandemic. And now they decide to, lessen costs of items that you need because again election year yeah. um so you know so they're now doing well, all of this stuff quietly meanwhile i mean there's a whole lot of just going out the door for like, scarcity right easy. now too right you know we we you can go all the way back to river of melted butter they've been burning fucking food places and you know chicken facilities and you know, all that stuff has been, and now with bird flu on top of that, that's supposedly coming, you know, like, I think you're going to see more of that too, where it's, and the blame will not be on any of the actual things causing that problem. So, right. you know, and the capitalism will just want you to throw money at it to fix it. So, ugh, uh, you know, the horizon doesn't look bright yet, but, you know, meanwhile, foreign powers might decide to stand up and do something about it. So we'll see. But, you know, hang, hang on to your boots, people. So but anyway, uh, you know, talking about this stuff is why we're demonetized. You can go to code-v.com slash indie news network if you want to donate to us. Scan that QR code on your screen. Put exclamation mark donate in chat if you want to leave us a live chat. Um, you can also go to Rockfin and Rumble. Links in the description below. Support us on other platforms. Um, you know, and if you can't do that, just like and subscribe. Very easy. Share this stream. We're heavily suppressed. Any little bit of that helps. Leaving a comment supposedly does things. You know, all that stuff to help the algorithm. Uh, help us get to 2K. We're we're almost there. We're like we're less than 40. 31, 31, yep. 31 subs away. Cool. Um, so 2K. hit that subscribe button.